Welcome to Discourse, I'm Susil Pandey. Nepal is undergoing a significant transition not only in politics but also in other aspects. It is in transition in education as well as other developmental issues. Today, I'm going to talk regarding these issues with an associate professor of Japanese University, Dr. Surendra Bandari. Welcome to the show, Dr. Bandari. Thank you very much, Susilji. It's my pleasure. Thank you. What are you doing now? Uh, currently, I'm associated with one of the universities in Japan, uh, Ritsumekan University, and I'm teaching at that university. Yeah. Uh, that's my job. So far as I know, you have a long career uh, internationally in the educational sector. You have studied in Nepal, taught in Nepal, then you have also studied in United States of America, then you also taught there, and now you have been teaching in Japanese University. You have so much experience. Yeah? Uh, let me know that. What do you find? What is the differences between the education system of Nepal and the U.S. and the Nepal and Japan? Uh, that's really a great question, Susuji. Thank you very much for that question. Uh, I just uh, want to give my perspective and uh, some facts. Looking at back U.S. and Japan, one of the interesting facts is that Students, they choose what course they should study, they sign up the course. And the professors are very qualitative, they are well prepared, they deliver their talk and lecture in the class, and the students have all the right to question the professors, and sometimes they ask very hard questions. Mm -hmm. And even sometimes <coughs> they challenge the ideas and concepts of professors. It's completely a discourse than a lecture. Yeah. And a professor in each class, that is not one single chapter, but a couple of books they cover in one single lecture. So it's basically the professor that disseminate ideas, current problems, recent discourses, and the solutions of the problems. Uh, back in Nepal, uh, I taught in Nepal for a couple of years, more than a decade. I don't mean that, but the educational environment in Nepal and back in the U.S. and Japan is completely different. One of the differences is that students are well prepared, back in Japan and U.S. Yeah. Students as well as professors. Eh? Professors are very qualified. Well, yeah. They work very hard. Mm -hmm. And it is required that they should know about their subject matter, mm -hmm. and then only about their subject matter, not beyond their subject matter. They are expert in only in the very limited area, mm -hmm. not beyond that. And whatever they deliver in class, they deliver the complete knowledge. Mm -hmm. A student expect. Yeah. The main problem is the lack of qualifications in professors, teachers, students, or the whole education system. What is the problem in Nepal? I see. Politics is one of the problems in Nepal. Two decades ago, one of my friends, he mentioned me that, Surenji, if you look at Nepali education and students, they know only one thing. That's a little bit over his statement, but to a certain extent it was correct. They know about politics. Politics means party politics. Yeah? Party politics. Mm -hmm. They know less about their subject matter. And look at the society. People, those who are successful in society, yeah. in different areas, they should have certain political connection or political background. Yeah. And that social fact that encourages people to involve in politics. Mm -hmm. But back in Japan or US or in any developed countries, especially let me talk about my own students, they know all about politics. They know about international relations. They know about international issues. Mm -hmm. They know about domestic issues. But they analyze the issues. Mm -hmm. They don't involve in politics. Mm -hmm. They provide their perspective. Mm -hmm. They analyze the strengths and weaknesses of the issues mm -hmm. and provide alternatives, like a professional, mm -hmm. not a politician. Yeah. But in Nepal, what I believe, uh, the young generation, they are 
slightly different. They don't have political ideology. They are not involved in politics. But most of these students, especially in public schools, public universities, they are heavily involved in politics. Do you mean that the main problem is party politics? That the all these students may be involving in one way or the other in Nepal, and the problem is also in professors, also in uh, students, and the whole educational policy. Right. Politics itself is not a bad game. Uh, one should be aware of politics. One should know the pros and cons of politics. Mm -hmm. But if the academia, the whole yeah. academia... Just students, wonder, I would like to ask one interesting question to you. You, you said that uh, all of, most of the students, the mm -hmm. students are involved in politics in one way or the other. But politics is... What is the condition of politics here? If most of the students or teachers or professors involved in politics, politics may be very good in Nepal, but what is the condition of politics? But pathetic condition Nepal is suffering, undergoing now. Right. As I mentioned before, Swissalji, as a citizen, each individual should be aware of politics. They should know it. Mm. But what do I mean by politics? Politics is a framework that you want to produce everything based on that framework. Yeah. In other words, politics <coughs> is driven by ideology. Mm. In societies, Mm -hmm. mostly driven by ideology, they have a lot of weaknesses. One, they give less priority to human resource development. Yeah. Their economic growth is not that satisfactory. Mm -hmm. They don't have competitive human resources. Mm -hmm. Their institutions are weak. Mm -hmm. They are all determined by political interest mm -hmm. and they serve political interest. That I often call high politics, politics in Nepal. So politics itself is not bad to understand politics, yeah. but to be involved, the professionals, the academic institutions are the backbone of any society. They should mm -hmm. produce professionals, mm -hmm. expert in particular but area. Politics in the sense that party politics party guided politics. by the some vested interest of some leaders. You mean that? Right. By certain political ideology and mm. you try to interpret, produce everything based on that ideology. Mm. Ideology has one serious weaknesses, drawbacks, that is, you don't tolerate different opinions, mm. different ideas. Lack of tolerance yeah. is a serious problem. Look at the current Nepalese political problems mm. and the political deadlock. Mm -hmm. So it is one of the results of the high politics politics in Nepal. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't want to give the wrong message to, to the audience. Politics itself is not bad, but you should be aware of politics. Politics, but party politics. Students, students should not be involved in politics. Mm -hmm. Academic institutions should not be involved in politics. Mm -hmm. Now, can I interrupt please, you? Please. Now you have been teasing in a Japanese university. Uh, rest American University, go to Japan. Right. Yeah. And uh, what do you think, teaching in Japan, what do you think, what should Nepal learn from Japan? There are a number of issues. The foremost issue is that I, I would like to emphasize is that professionalism. That's professionalism the, in every field. Every field. Expertise, believe in expertise. Mm -hmm. Universities, they produce human resources. Mm -hmm. And in the long run, they are the expert in the particular area. Mm -hmm. Our university also claims that they are producing human resources. Yeah. Right. We, we all are the pro production of the Nepalese University. I studied in Nepal, you studied in Nepal. Yeah. I don't mean that our universities, our institutions are too bad. But the problem is that Political parties, they interfere in the university's affairs, educational matters a lot. That's the problem. Universities should not be involved, or students should not be involved in politics. Mm -hmm. They should emphasize, they should give their time for their study, develop knowledge, mm -hmm. ideas, and professionalism. That's the requirement of the country. For the growth and the development of any society, it is, it is always led by 
people, human yeah. resources. And if you have weak human resources, yeah. less competitive human resources, society cannot grow. Do you mean that our political uh, our educational system cannot produce the human resources as the need of the society and the nation? I don't mean that. It is producing, it can produce, but there are problems. Those problems should be addressed. Yeah. There might be many problems, but one of the serious problems is politics. Politics, yeah. Politics, party politics, right. which is guided by the vested interest of some leaders. That is the serious problem, right? right? So far as Japan is concerned, now Japan has suffered a devastating history in its, in its recent time, recent past. Right. But it has developed so much. Mm -hmm. Nepal, so far as Nepal is concerned, Nepal is revolving at the same circle from the mm -hmm. last one, two or three, more than six decades. Right. Right. Still, we are talking about the constant assembly and producing, promulgating new constitution from that. And agendas are the same as they were right. in 1950. Now, why we are revolving at the same circle? Susanji, you asked a lot of questions. Let me start from the first question. Why Japan developed and Nepal could not catch up the same pace? There might be a number of reasons. When I was in Japan in 2011, I asked the same question to my colleagues. Mm -hmm. Look at your size. You are 3.5 times bigger than Nepal. Mm -hmm. You haven't used almost 60% of your land. Yeah. But still, you are the second largest economy. But from 2011, China became the second largest economy, but still third largest economy. Mm -hmm. By using a small portion of their land, how come you have been third largest economy? That was my question. And my colleagues answered me very simple. The answer is very simple. Education, mm -hmm. honesty, work ethic, work culture, mm -hmm. and the system of corporate governance. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the answers given to me by my colleagues. Mm -hmm. These are very simple answers, yeah. but they have very immense values. They have deep-rooted social values. Mm -hmm. For example, look at the work culture, work ethics. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Let me give you one simple example. One decade ago, the efficiency, working efficiency of Japanese and Chinese was compared. Mm -hmm. And Japanese were almost 36 times efficient than Chinese. Yeah. Perhaps in this 10 years time, it, is, it might not be the 36 percent higher efficiency in Japan. What's about but, today, please? Uh, I don't have any data, but I believe that yes, they are very competent Nepalese, especially young people. They are scholar. Yeah. They are very educated people. But they, they have only the dream to go abroad and live there. Right. For example, their dream to go America. Then Australia, I'm talking in number wise, yeah? Right. Then Japan or right. any other Western countries. Right. They have only one dream to go abroad and live there. Right. It's human nature. Once one of the American president, he told that citizens should contribute for nation, for the country. Yeah. One of the economists answered that question. He said that the state should be for the people. Individual is not for the state. The state is for the individual. What I'm trying to say. But Dr. Bandar, let me know one thing. What about those people, young people also, who go to abroad and they just only blame and rebuke or scold to, to the country, to the land, the motherland on the Facebook? What about them? There are some justifications too. For example, they don't see any opportunity in the country. That's one reason. My question is, if they do not see any opportunity, it's okay, but why they are rebuking, scolding, and blaming the people, country only? Perhaps there are some reasons. For example, as you mentioned, it has already been five years. The political parties and the political leaders, they are making a constitution, they are writing a constitution. There are two different terminologies, making and writing. Yeah. 
uh, they are not making constitution, they are writing, writing. constitution, but still they, are not, they haven't been able to write a constitution during this five years time. So this gives a public frustration because people have certain expectation to their political leaders, political parties. The minimum expectation is that they keep off the promises they make to the people. And very few promises they have been able to keep off. That's one of the reasons. Second reason is that, look at the development aspects of Nepal. Nepal is one of the 15 poorest countries in the world. Yeah. 15 poorest countries. Mm -hmm. Given the opportunity to Nepali people, Nepali young people, look at any university, any institution, wherever they go, they are very bright. They have, they have excelled so many students, their performance is very excellent, mm -hmm. very satisfactory. So given the opportunities, Nepali people, Nepali youngsters, they have quality and capacity to perform mm -hmm. well, to deliver well. There are scientists, there are doctors, there are lawyers, there are engineers everywhere. They are leader in their profession. Whether they are in the US, whether they are mm -hmm. in Europe, whether they are in Japan, they are leader. It means Nepal does not have any opportunity to enhance their own qualities or creativity. Yeah. But my question is why they don't try to create opportunity at the first place? It is a responsibility of every Nepali. It is my responsibility, it is your responsibility, it is the responsibility of the Nepali people living anywhere in the world. It is our responsibility. We should support in building a system. The problem yeah. of Nepal is that the system has not been built. That's the yeah. problem. You have said that they are not making constitution, they are writing constitution, and now Nepal is trying to promulgate a new constitution, <laughs> and political parties are right. they are hashing out right. on some agendas like mm -hmm. identity-based politics, uh, identity-based federal research, and so on. Right. What do you think? Can they do it, or can they promulgate a new constitution as desired by the people, as desired by the nation, or that can address the need of the community, society, nation? But what I mean by promulgating a constitution, writing a constitution, and making a constitution is that making a constitution is a process in which people own the constitution. Yeah. They know why the particular provision should be there in the constitution. Mm -hmm. And they defend that provision. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is necessary for my country. Mm -hmm. This builds my system. System building is simply the name of fairness in society. Mm -hmm. Social creating justice. Or, social justice mm -hmm. and creating opportunity in society. So they believe in that constitution. Yeah. They believe that this is my document. Mm -hmm. This gives me fairness in society. I get justice in society. Mm -hmm. That is called the ownership of the constitution. That is constitution making as you That's said. constitution yeah. making. But we are not doing that. We are just writing constitution. Why we are not making constitution means when the, the main idea of constituent assembly was that there will be a rigorous debate on constitutional issues. Yeah. Each member of the CA, they will come up with different ideas, proposals. From top to the bottom, yeah? Yes, right. To the right. people also. Right. Mm -hmm. And then there will be a serious discourse on the, mm. each and every provision of the constitution. Mm. And when there is discourse, media like you, you disseminate the discourse. And people watch that. Wow, this is my leader. He's talking about this yeah. issue. And I know this issue. Now I have been convinced. Mm. So that's it's a process. What do you think we are not doing that? We are not taking the issues to the basic level, to the community, to the society. I think that. Uh, Article 70 of the Constitution, that guides how to make a Constitution. Mm -hmm. Till now, Article 70 of the Constitution has not been involved has mm -hmm. not been exercised. Yeah. They are trying what to... What is there in Article 70 of okay. the Indian Constitution? Article 70 mentions that when the Constituent Assembly is constituted, the very first moment, the very first day, the chair of the Constituent Assembly should invite the member of the Constituent Assembly to propose a draft of Constitution. Mm -hmm. There could be 601 drafts of the constitution. Mm -hmm. There could be only one consensus document. There could be 10, whatever the number. Mm -hmm. If they compete with each other, compete means the ideas will compete with each other. And among them, the best 
article, best provision, best idea mm -hmm. could be adopted by the CA members because they are rational people. They are autonomous people. But the few political leaders, four or five, whatever is the number, mm -hmm. they hijacked all the autonomy, all the power of the CA members. And they are trying to solve all the problems. This means they decide what should be the constitution. Mm -hmm. They are trying to write the constitution. A constitution can be written by an expert mm -hmm. like you and me yeah. within a couple of days. Yeah. But that cannot enhance mm -hmm. the imagination, yeah. ownership. It means of the we people. neither we are not writing constitution, neither nor making constitution. constitution. Yes. Right. <laughs> then what are we doing? Why are we spending the time of this generation? Please ask that question to the chairperson of the CA, but in my opinion, mm -hmm. they are trying to propose a constitution bill with consensus. Mm -hmm. Within the framework of the CA rules, they have two rules, two laws, that is yeah. called rules. And those rules are, in a number of ways, contradictory to the constitution. Mm -hmm. They are not compatible with the constitution. Yeah. With these incompatible rules, they are trying to promulgate a constitution. So there, there is a problem. You have said that we should make con constitution on consensus ba basis with the process. Uh, right. So what, what, what does it mean? Look at, th there is no controversy between process and consensus. Interim constitution 2007 is a political document. Document, yeah. Political in the sense that it is a national political consensus. Mm -hmm. It's a legal document. So what is written there is a national political consensus. So many people interpret differently for that constitution, as you mentioned, the interim constitution. Right. right. Uh, you can interpret the constitution the way you like. Mm -hmm. But it is the responsibility of the citizen and especially the political leaders mm -hmm. to faithfully understand the constitution and to follow the constitution. On the issues of making a constitution, Article 70 of the Interim Constitution provides how the new constitution should be promulgated. Mm -hmm. and that is about process, that is about consensus. Okay, is let, me, let me know that how. Right. CA Chair yeah. should allow the members of the Constituent Assembly, CA members, to propose the draft of the constitution. Mm -hmm. it, it was the job, it was the responsibility of the CA chair to invite the CA members on the first day mm -hmm. of the constitution of the CA. Mm -hmm. But the CA chair never invited its members to propose the constitution draft. That was one of the serious weaknesses. Mm -hmm. This means this is a process. You already started the process if you invoke Article 71. Yeah. And then you discuss about those proposals, articles, different provisions of the proposed constitution, and then you choose among the best alternatives. Mm -hmm. That is Article 72. And it mentions that at least there should be two third majority to take a decision. Mm -hmm. So with two third majority constitution could be Propagated. Propagated. Or each article or provision of the constitution. Even if the constitution is promulgated through voting process right. with two third majority? Right. Because there is no alternative of Article 70. Article 70 of the constitution is the fundamental document, basic document of this country. That is the highest law. Mm -hmm. So what is written in the constitution, that is consensus. Mm -hmm. And to follow the process as mentioned by the constitution is the dutiful obligation yeah. of the member of the CA and the Council Assembly. Mm -hmm. So there is no controversy between consensus and mm -hmm. process. Yeah. So I consider the, the controversy is not logical, not constitutional, mm -hmm. not legally valid. Okay, Dr. Wanda, we are at the end of the program also. You know that where the political parties are in loggerheads so far as right. this <laughs> consensus and the uh, process is constant they are now in in a longer hairs. Right. Political standoff is there. Then what is your prescription to resolve that problem? The simple. That's simple. The C rules, it is 
in contradiction with the constitution, they should scrap or amend the CA rules. When you amend the CA rules, the questionnaire process that is too rigid plus. Yeah. With the questionnaire process, you cannot promulgate a constitution. You need questionnaire only when you transit from Article 71 to 72. Mm -hmm. It is not a time now they are exercising Article 71 and 2. So yeah. there is no relevancy of questionnaire. Are you saying that questionnaire committees should be an old? Uh, I don't mean that, but it, it has no relevance. It has no relevance. Yeah. So first, they should amend the rules. First. That gives space to Maoist, mm -hmm. modest based political parties. And Maoist and modest based political parties, they have a public commitment, political mm -hmm. commitment, to promulgate the constitution through a process. It is not their moral authority and political authority to go out of the Constitution Assembly mm. and have a mass movement. It has no logical end. They cannot promulgate a Constitution through movement from the street. Mm -hmm. Almost all the agenda of Maoists and Amadeus parties have already been incorporated. Mm -hmm. For example, Republican Nepal. Mm -hmm. For example, Federalism. Federalism. Secularism, secularism and inclusive state. democracy. Yeah. Right. Those were the issues of Maoists and Maoist parties. They have already been accepted. But the you have seen Maoist and other mother centric political parties are saying that uh, the Valley Congress and CBN UML are just incorporating such kind of elements mm -hmm. achieved by the second people's uprising right. only in names, but not in, in a real sense. They are saying like that. If you say, look at it. If the constitution declares that Nepal is a republican state, what do you mean by more than that? Constitution cannot do more than that. Mm -hmm. It just declares Nepal is a republican yeah. state. Constitution is, well. not, constitution is not yeah. all about the whole legal framework. It yeah. provides basic legal guidance. Dr. Bandari, I have so many questions to ask with you, but due to time constant, uh, I'd like to ask very one, one single question at the end Please. of the program. You, you have been teaching in the Japanese University and uh, why don't you think your expertise may be useful in Nepal and come back to Nepal and live here? Thank you, thank you Stusaji, you are encouraging me to come back to Nepal, uh, perhaps. <coughs> uh, in fact, I'm thinking like that. Perhaps in the near future, I'll come back to Nepal and I start working in Nepal. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll have more uh, casual meeting, you know, yeah. friendship with you. I'll have that opportunity. And Welcome to <laughs> Nepal in your future and at thank the very you, end, I'm very thankful Thank you very much indeed for giving us so, so precious time. It's my great pleasure, Susanji, to have this opportunity. Thank you very much. Today I've talked with Associate Professor Dr. Student of Andari. Thanks for watching. Stay with us. Goodbye and Namaste.